Have you ever tried Ray's famous corned beef and cabbage? If you have not, you really should. Welcome to Saint Paul's YouTube channel on Third Sunday in Lent. I am Father Andrew, the rector of this parish, and I am glad that you are here with me. As always, be sure to check the video description below for our new March edition of the Good News, Lessons, and the Prayer List. But first, let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in, your, in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. John 2, 13-22 shows Jesus being upset at all these merchants selling their stuff at the temple. He turned their tables upside down and sternly drove them away. Looking at Jesus, the disciples then remembered the saying, Zeal for your house will consume me. When Jesus behaved this way, Jews asked him, What signs do you have to act this way? They were saying to him, Who are you to tell us what to do? They were selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifice. They were doing, so they thought, to please God after all. And underneath their statement, what sign can you show us to act this way, is who are you to tell us what to do? And what's even underneath that statement is a thought. How could we possibly be wrong when we are just trying to please God and doing God's favor by helping people get their animal or sacrifice? Jesus was calling out for religious exceptionalism today. Well, it's not just about religious institutional exceptionalism and piety. He is addressing our own sense of exceptionalism that says, how could I be possibly wrong so long as we're just trying to love God? When we hear ourselves doing that and saying that, we must ask ourselves, is it God that we are trying to please or our zealous ideology of who we think God is? If we think we are pleasing God, and yet if we get frustrated by not getting what we want, we must ask ourselves if it's God we are trying to love and please, or our own inner self-glorified idea of God. It may not be as tangible as the golden calf, but essentially that is exactly what we are worshipping in our mind called idolatry. Certainty without prayerful self-examination, study, and action, and most of all, love, a zeal that will consume God. How do we know if we are doing the right thing then? In Paul's first letter to Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25 says, Jews look for signs and Greeks look for wisdom. As for us, the followers of Jesus Christ, we look for the kind of 
ultimate humility and sacrifice he showed us through his crucifixion. We know how much we love God by how humbly we love our neighbor as Jesus taught us. Frederick Buechner said, the place God called you to is the place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Anybody can share good ideas. We all have some ideas of what the world needs or should do. If our righteousness ignores, however, the world's hunger, but we thirst for our gladness to God's love, Beekner tells us that is not where God calls us. In fact, as Dorothy Days put it bluntly, we only love God as much as we love the person we love the very least. As we continue on this Lenten season, how would you love God and our neighbor? Not either or, but both and kind of humble way. Amen. As I mentioned in the opening, if you have not tasted rays, corned beef, and cabbage, you are missing out big time. We are having our annual St. Patrick's celebration this Saturday, and like the last year, we celebrate this great occasion in a drive through fashion. It will help us greatly to prepare meals if we knew the head counts ahead of time. So please, 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 RSVP with Robin before Wednesday. And thank you so much for supporting Calvary Food Bank. We have received another Sunday full of abundant donations from friends in the community, from where the most contribution comes. As the scripture tells us, the harvest, harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, and we need your help. If you feel safe being part of this God's mission, please contact the office, and we really need you. As for the Christian formation, we have been enjoying our virtual study groups. Our Bible study is every Wednesday morning from 11 to noon, and joint book discussion with friends from St. James Shelbyville is Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. We are reading another Barbara Brown Taylor's book, Learning to Walk in the Dark. Even if you don't own a copy, it's a good time to uh, enjoy fellowship and conversation, and you're always welcome there. And with all the virtual learning and fellowship, are you or do you know somebody feeling in intimidated by technology? As the angel told folks in the Bible, do not be afraid. While I am no angel, I'll be happy to commiserate with you and see what we can do to resolve the technical problems together possibly. So please talk to Robin in the office and schedule an appointment. I'll be happy to help you every Thursday morning. So, thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you next Sunday. Stay, stay safe, and God's peace be with you.